Hi. So this unit is going to be fun. More so in class than here. I'm going to stick right to the IB stuff. So here we go. So here's your uh, things. They're all in red here. Okay, which means uh, need to know for all levels. Um, this basic idea. It's always good to have the big picture basic idea. Okay. This is a nervous system kind of thing, which allows organisms that have a nervous system, not all of them do, right? But what all organisms can do is this stuff. They can sense stimuli from the environment. To do that, they have to have some kind of part of themselves that can receive that sensation. That could be a body part, but in that body part, what it boils down to is that it sells. But in those cells, what it boils down to is that there's molecules. There's molecules, often in the membrane of those cells, there's molecules that, that when something bumps into them, that something might be a molecule, that's our most common thing we talk about, but it might be light, it might be that they were pushed, it might be pressure, but it causes that molecule to change, and that starts triggering the chain of events that sends a message that this stimulus is out there. It sends it to an integration center, the brain of an organism that has a brain. That might be the nucleus of a cell, or if it's a prokaryotic cell, which doesn't have a nucleus, it's the DNA stuff that's going to integrate that, in a sense, by turning on some genes and maybe turning off some genes. After that integration, and what integration means, this little center here is getting bombarded by lots of different messages. And it is going to integrate them and say, okay, I've made a decision. Here's what we're going to do about it. That is referred to as the motor output. And so another way to look at this is that there are nerves that sense the stimulus and send often through a series of nerves, a message to the integration center, which is a bunch of nerves, right? If we're talking about a brain, which we are here. And then those are going to send a message out of some nerves to something that can do something about it. Motor here doesn't necessarily mean movement, but often it is because one of the effectors, that's a word you need to know, one of the effectors, a thing that can do something about this stimulus, in other words, respond to it. That's another word here, right? The effectors are either muscles or glands that are going to secrete some kind of hormone, some kind of enzyme, some kind of whatever, or muscles that are either going to contract or relax because sometimes the message is to, okay, you're contracted, it's time for you to relax. So that big picture now we can fit the details into in terms of the nervous system. So this is what I said. Effector cells are parts of muscle or muscles or glands. Um, so here is neuron structure stuff. I don't remember that it says, I'll see when I get here, but um, in that red ink, whether it says you need to label this, but I'm pretty sure you do. Uh, I think I've seen it in tests. Pretty common to see a, a, a typical neuron. That's the kind of nerve cell that sends a message. There are other kinds of nerve cells, too, that are called glial cells. They kind of help. The main players, though, in the nervous system are the neurons, and it's got these parts that you might have to label, and um, we'll get there when we get there, like is right now. Okay, so here we have something we're going to come to this a little later more specifically, but here you have your classic neuron, right? And here it says neurons transmit electrical impulses. That's better said electrochemical because electricity is electrons flowing through something like a wire, right? Um, this is not electrons. This is charged things going in and out of this cell, crossing a membrane. But here they call it electrical because it has to do with charges. But it's not electricity. So myelination there's a word okay we'll get to it in another one here but i'm going to show it here okay you see it up here myelin's a type of lipid 
It's a type of lipid that some cells have lots of in themselves and their membranes. And so if those cells wrap themselves around part of the neuron, that's what all these little white ovals are. They're actually cells. If you can think of a, like a, um, a, a piece of pita bread, right? A piece of pita bread is like a cell. It's got an inside and an outside and it's flat and it's kind of circular. If you think of taking a piece of pita bread and wrapping it around a wire, that's a good analogy to what these cells, which are called Schwann cells, we'll see that later, Schwann is a guy's name. Each of these is a cell. And like a piece of pita bread wrapped around a wire, it's wrapped around and it insulates because it's got a lot of this myelin lipid in it. And lipids are good insulators. In this case, what they insulate is they prevent the movement in and out of these charged particles except for in between them. So now I'm getting into a little too much detail because I'll get that later in a minute. But back to the big picture, which I've lost sight of here. The big picture is the parts of a neuron that you might have to label, okay? Here you have the nerve cell body, right? That's simply the biggest part of this, right? All of these parts are part of the body of this cell, but um, the nerve cell body, as it's commonly called, is the place where you're gonna find the nucleus, most of the ER, a mitochondria and all that stuff okay dendrite dendra is a latin word that means branch and so this is a good name for these branches which are multiple and that much more multiple than this diagram shows often and then there's this one bigger branch that's special it's a sync a single branch but at the end of it it also has these branches okay so that single branch is called the axon. These are called the dendrites. This is the cell body. And this is a key right here. This signal that we kind of liken to electricity passing through a wire, right? This signal goes through a neuron always in one direction. This is called one-way transmission, very simply, right? It goes from the dendrite area or it might even start in the cell body, as we'll see, right? But it goes from this direction down the axon to that direction. The axon is what connects to that next thing. That next thing might be another nerve cell, like it is here. See, the axon of this neuron is connecting to, in this case, like dendrites or the cell body of this one. Or what might be at the end of this axon is a muscle or a gland, right? So this neuron might just send its message along to another neuron, which sends the message to somewhere else, or it might send it to the actual effector, okay? So this one-way transmission is uh, a directional thing, which is a, a need-to-know thing. These impulses, and we're gonna, we're gonna explain why, these impulses never go that way. Theoretically, they could, and we'll explain this, but in practicality, they don't, and there's a very good reason. So here we go with that set up. Um, so at the, um, uh, sorry, I kind of skipped it back there. At this junction, which is what synapse means, remember what synapsis was in meiosis? Now we're reviewing again. Synapsis is when two already replicated double-strand chromosomes find each other. The process is called synapsis and produce that thing that we call a tetrad. Okay, synapse is a Greek word that means come together. That's why that word is used for this process, synapsis, when they're coming together. And for, for this, synapse is the place where these two things connect. And really specifically, a synapse is where two neurons connect. If it's a neuron attaching to a muscle, we call it a neuromuscular junction. That makes sense. But it's not the worst thing in the world to call it a synapse. Okay. So we'll get to what's going to happen at this synapse in a little bit with these molecules called neurotransmitters. Okay. So here's words, though, that were on the last diagram, too. So that 
neuron. I'll make it right here. There's its axon, right? It's going to connect to this other neuron somehow. There's its axon. The one, if we're talking about this synapse where it connects, and the message is always going in that direction, right, from cell body down the axon, this would be called the pre synaptic neuron right because it's before the synapse the synapse that we're talking about and this is the post synaptic neuron if you're talking about this synapse right here okay so this is your basic kind of um reflex arc this is not in the syllabus i tend to think it used to be but this shows the outline of all the stuff we've talked about right here you've got some um nerve cells that um, these would be the receptors you've got some nerve cells that when they stretch like when a doctor bangs on this tendon right here and stretches these that is the trigger that's the stimulus to um, uh, to start this uh, impulse down the line so here's the impulse that these stretch receptors here these are nerve cells right and they pass their message this way here's their cell body way up here near your backbone right here's their cell body so this is a big long dendrite here with many branches and the impulse is going this way like we said out the axon it then synapses with a very short neuron in your spinal cord that then synapses with a very long neuron this neuron has a very long axon. It goes all the way from your backbone to your thigh here, and that causes that causes you to do that. Okay, so um, there's the motor response and the stimulus and the integration center, but this one skipped the integration center of your brain, but it didn't because the fact that the doctor hit your knee with this doesn't require your brain to do this little action that we call a reflex. This ends up being the integration center here, basically. However, another nerve's axon is going to synapse with another neuron here, and it's going to send this message up to your brain. The point here is that for these reflexes, you can make the response without your brain being involved, but your brain does become aware of the stimulus um, uh, by having other neurons send a message to it. And so what the evolution of these reflexes is all about is that for some kind of things, it's helpful to be able to respond really quickly without your brain having to make a decision, even though your brain can do that really fast. This is even quicker. So uh, we don't need those words. Um, uh, so here we have um, what they tell you that you don't need to know, but this is kind of interesting in the variety category. Sometimes you have neurons, like we just saw one, with a big long dendrite and a big long axon. Sometimes you see them with a whole lot of, um, these would be axons, a whole lot of axons with a whole lot of branches, sometimes up to 10,000 different neurons can be connected to one single one without connecting to all these branches. And here you have one with a, a really long axon and the dendrites kind of are like in the middle of where the cell bias, all kinds of variety. You don't need to know those different ones. Anybody, any, anybody, anyway, ha, here <laughs> is a little more close up with the name that I said before, Schwann cells. Each of these cells again, here you can see how they're wrapped around like a piece of pita bread wrapped around, but it's a living cell. Uh, there's this nucleus kind of right behind the box here. Um, and they wrap around and insulate this axon. Not all neurons are myelinated. Not all neurons have this. Your classic neuron in a diagram, though, um, uh, is going to have this. And here you have a very... Um, important part that's named after another guy, Ranvier. This little section that's not myelinated is a key little section in the way that nerve impulses pass down this myelinated axon. And we'll get there in a little bit. 